A reading from Romans chapter 8 verses 12 to 25. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labour pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. One of the great problems in the world today is debt. It's a serious and a growing problem. However, when I look back to the time when I was growing up, things were very different. Banks didn't allow most people to have debt. Credit cards hadn't been invented. Student loans hadn't even been thought about. So though people did get themselves into debt, the controls were much tighter. And rather than borrowing large sums of money, most people did try to live within their means. Nowadays, of course, most of us have several plastic cards and loans and overdrafts are very easy to secure. The problem with debt, of course, is that one day we're expected to pay back what it is that we've borrowed. In today's reading, Paul begins this dramatic passage by saying that we are all in debt and that none of us can avoid that. However, the good news, says Paul, is that in Christ we can escape the burdens of debt, the burdens of sin, the separation between us and God. We are debtors, but we've been set free. We are sinners, but we've been forgiven. We are dying, and yet we live. We are slaves of sin, and yet God calls us his children. We are suffering, and yet we share in the glory of Christ. We may be debtors, but in Christ our past has been cancelled, our debts have been wiped out, and our future is secure in the love of God and the forgiveness of Christ. As Paul says, for in hope we were saved. For in hope we were saved. As ever, however, Paul has a much bigger perspective than just our own lives. He's thinking about the whole of creation as he writes these words. And what he says is that creation is also suffering. He uses a very vivid image when he speaks about this by saying that the whole creation has been groaning in labour pains until now. Just as a woman in labour looks forward to the birth of her child, so creation, says Paul, is longing to be renewed and made whole and healed again. The evening hymn, Abide With Me, has the words, Change and decay in all around I see, but thou who changest not, abide in me. And so Paul uses a very vivid image when he speaks about the world. He says that creation is waiting with eager longing for the time when wrongs are righted, when sin is banished, 
when injustice is no more and when beauty and harmony are restored. The images that he uses is the word used of an athlete straining towards the finishing line or a night watchman eagerly watching for the first signs of dawn or a child standing on tiptoes to catch a glimpse of something that is coming. So in this wonderful passage in Romans, Paul brings these two ideas together. He links the intimacy of being known as a child of God with creation, waiting to be released to fulfil its purposes. The Spirit enables us to recognise God as our Father and to recognise that we are children of God. With that understanding, however, comes the recognition that we and all God's children are called to nurture, care for and steward the creation that God has entrusted into our hands. The five marks of mission end with a glorious ambition to strive to safeguard the integrity of creation and to sustain and renew the life of the earth. It's a very bold statement which calls us to pay close attention to all that is around us and to ensure that we care for the environment in ways that will sustain it for the future. You may have heard the Native American proverb, we do not inherit the earth from our ancestors, we borrow it from our children. We are called to safeguard and steward it for future generations. In this passage we read that the present sufferings of today are nothing in comparison to the glory that is to come. So when life becomes complicated, unwieldy, scary, isolating or even empty, God invites us to turn our thoughts to him. For in hope we were saved. We are children of our Heavenly Father, sons and daughters of God, joint heirs with Jesus and safe in the hands of the one that we call Abba.